Hunter x Hunter episode 133. And narrowly escaping with his life. I'm trying to imagine what these people thought showing up to this. These not non hypnotized people. They arrived to this crowd of zombies and like a butterfly that's <laughs> just pouring spores on everyone. You don't need to stay here, you can leave. Uh, it's too late, you got spored. You had a moment, you had a chance that you squandered, you wasted it. Now you two shall become grapes. <laughs> I'm gonna say this to my girlfriend next time I want to get out of something. I already gave you six sevenths of my power. <laughs> and it greatly weakened my body. <laughs> it has left me unable to go to Ikea. I mean, we don't really care about these scrubs anyway, do we? How many times can we mention Pito before we find out? Like, for life. To live. Not that he's thinking about it that way. I just can't get over the thought of being in this crowd. Being a normal person and showing up to this. The leader has summoned us. How long do you think we have to wait? Is it okay to leave? Is that a butterfly? <laughs> what is that over there? There's a butterfly man raining glitter on everyone. Deadline X to X live. The last bastions of hope for humanity. Two aquatic creatures. One octopus, one fish lady. No, oh, Wolfen's still around. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, who knows? His standards are sort of unclear. I mean, it's worse than that. He's both unclear about what he wants and yet very serious about it. So you may do something in good faith because you think it's good for him and that he wants it, but you get tail blasted like the eagle. What's the plan, though? What's the real plan? He was always sort of free, just, you know, because nobody really cared what he was doing. Oh, they knew each other. They did know each other. He remembers. The conversation must have triggered something. I mean, I feel like that sort of misses the point, but... Is he alive? He's been out for a long time. We're all here. He's definitely alive. Just like Kite. If you believe, it becomes true. But not for real, he's an ant. Wolfen's emotional day. It's been through a lot. It's also full of holes right now. They just can't fathom a world in which Peter was beaten by Gon, which makes sense. Avoid the glitter if you can. And these girls probably have no idea that there's even ants. Wow, Wolfen's emotional day is only just beginning. Oh, he's so cute. You're probably still destroy most people like this in this form. It's crazy that Akako saw the same light that everyone else did, the one that made Knuckle flee. And it's just him and Pam as far as he knows. And yet, he's coming up with a plan to beat the king with what tools? Pam's clairvoyance. And you have parasitism and then gun, but that's not gonna work. Oh, I just didn't even occur to me how much danger Welfin is in right now. Welfin is in great danger, he knows too much. He's a threat to Poof and you, Yuppie. 
We got a cold? What's going on? Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, have you looked at... Alright. Mirrors. Well, if it has none. But I mean, it speaks to the fact that it's there's no real biological sides here. Well, he was the only one who was non-human, right? He was like majestic beasts. He's the only one who probably couldn't have memories. Very, very bold of you. <laughs> well, Wolfen actually means something now. He got his wish. What is happening to you? Do you need a tissue? Oh, it's over. He's gonna get it. He's gonna stop thinking about it for a few minutes and then it's just gonna like spring to mind. God help us if he finds a feather. Oh no, it's over. Who was I playing with? We got arm. We got Kamugi arm. Somebody magnificent. Interesting that that's how he'd remember it. That is so ultimate being. He's fighting Welfin. Yuppie's defeated by Welfin? Or is he just sick? What happened? Yuppie. I was watching. I wonder how he reacts. He's actually dead? Something was going on. Something was going on. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to believe the Welfin beat him. What was with the, like, the nose stuff? What is it? Radioactive fallout? I thought... I just assumed with their power level, they also can like regenerate stuff and heal. That was really sudden and kind of sad for Yuppie. What a way for this great warrior to go out getting sick. Oh, ah, the only one left. It's only... How did Poof end up being the last one standing of the Royal Guard? <laughs> Yeah, I had a feeling he would take it that way. He doesn't care. No, it hasn't. It's over. All three royal guards are dead now. Royal guard is gone. Some good thinking, Palm. Also, this could have ended disastrously if he just like neck chopped Palm, not knowing Kamugi was there. How long will that be exactly? Is Palm the true badass here? Or are you thinking to kill him? What are you getting at, Pop? No, no, she has a plan. Does this have something to do with Yupi? What? Alright, so it does seem like it's the radioactive stuff. I don't know why, I just assumed that given his rebirth and his power, it wouldn't have an impact. Wow, if that's true, Netero actually did help in a very roundabout and dangerous way. Which is odd, it's the dark side of humanity having a victory over the ants. It's sort of unsatisfying if that's how the king goes out. Though if I'm being honest, my initial emotional reaction to her saying that it applies to him and that he has a limited lifespan was an internal sigh of relief just we can go back to the natural order without this supreme being thing we no longer have to gamble on his enlightenment oh it's complicated it's not so thematically satisfying but practically speaking it's great news if true don't put kamugi in a box don't put her in a box that's not safe that's Really degrading. <laughs> God, she's like Raiders of the Lost Ark over here. She is the Ark of the Covenant. Well, 
Uh, it's not great. Like, even this, it's not a lot of leverage. It's great to hear you think the king will die. It's a compound, and you just put her in a box in, like, the warehouse? Like, I don't know. If I'm the ultimate being, I'm gonna figure that out. I'm gonna find her. I don't need to negotiate with you. I don't know why this ultimate being stuff is starting to resonate with me so strongly. Like, I don't want the king to ultimate being, but also at the same time, I want him to ultimate being. If you're not gonna ultimate being, you know, step aside and let's go back to what we were doing before. This isn't what Poof would have wanted. I'm already talking about Poof in the past tense. They're still drawing the, the wormholes in his head. That's crazy. It does feel a little bit wrong to put her in a box. I mean, who are the ants, really? There it is. Do you know who the real enemy is? Right, it's not really the box as much as it is this. This is a pretty damning statement on humanity. Not that I think it applies to Netero in this case, because, you know, he lured the king out to that testing facility. Just symbolically. I know. Oh, it's hitting him too. God, his ultimate power. For what? God, what a sucker punch. It's not along any of the grounds that you're trying to win. Or along things you value. You're just sick. That hurts. That sucks. Weird version of post-mortem Nen. Nen is so cool, right? Because it's life itself and specific to human experience and who the person is, etc. So there's this point where Nen crosses into reality and it's the same thing. It overlaps. This is still Netero's will. It's still the, the malice of humanity. Anyway, it's a, it's a final, very dark version of what we've seen a bunch in this arc, starting with Moral and later with Netero, of, well, I win either way. I'm still not sure it applies to the king. I mean, maybe I should just trust Pom's narration as coming from the heart of the story itself or the author himself, but with the whole death and rebirth thing, maybe I'm just in denial, I don't know. Maybe because it's unsatisfying, it's like not really a victory in an important sense. Not in a bad way, in a great way. Kind of like how Gon's transformation was amazing but terrible. We're in the middle of exploring this thing of where is the light here? You know, there's humans and ants, but it's not so clear that what's good is relegated to one or the other species. And there's Miriam who's kind of like on this teetering point between ant and human, and he's on this quest to find Kamugi, and you're wondering what happens if he finds Kamugi. Is there a chance he can actually be good? Is there a chance he can be redeemed? Will he find that higher thing? Will he actually become the light in a meaningful sense as opposed to just, you know, having a bright light that he flashes on the world, very literally being light? And then if the answer is just, well, it doesn't really matter because, you know, cancer, that would be rough spiritually. I mean, in a very real and sad way, it also is kind of an answer to this ultimate being thing in the sense that I am superior because I'm physically stronger. That only works as long as you're physically strong and you're not going to be physically strong forever. What is the legacy that you leave behind? Right now, it's like, I don't know, human grapes, a bunch of people standing outside with their mouths open. I mean, actually, it seems more and more likely that ants are now just a part of the world, but that's not the king's doing. If anything, that's the queen's legacy. To put it very simply, I feel very sad watching this. I feel sad that Yupi died that way. He's shown these moments of being this honorable warrior. Peter's death is really sad too, but she died. Well, I was going to say she died in her feet, but that's not true. She died in battle. Thinking about what Palm said at the end there, you know, it's us. We're we're the the ones. I think that's probably true and works if we're talking about it on a, on a level of potential. Like, okay, humanity contains the potential to to reach the very depths of the most evil thing possible in ways that only humans can even like certain evils are exclusively human it seems but doesn't work if it's meant to cast an aspersion on every character or say that all humans are evil by default of being human and containing the, the capacity or potential for evil it's not the same thing i mean i think it's clear watching there's very different shades of character and people and maybe even more importantly choices moment to moment that give a much larger range and possibility it's the possibility that makes it so exciting to watch this like if they were all just terrible and evil was a function of their beings intrinsically then there would be really no stakes it's just like whoever can punch harder or whatever it's because we're defending something greater that there stakes at all and what's cool about the arc is that it flips you don't know where it's going to come from you think it's going to come from the invading team but not always the case go and casting the biggest shadow on that belief you think the chimera ants are going to be terrible but you know you got Ikago. you have Miriam in moments you have Pito in moments even You've you be in moments. You have Malirion, like, for me, it sort of came out of nowhere. Even Netero, it's questionable to me. I, I think when that episode ended, I came away from it feeling like it was a victory. And it was definitely a victory strategically. Was it a victory emotionally and thematically? That's a harder question. The nuclear bomb itself, I think, is imbued with sort of that threat of human capability. Like, what if we give into our most extreme malice combined with our ability to create and innovate? That would be the most catastrophic thing. I mean, it just carries with it so much. It carries death of innocence. It carries long-lasting effects like we're seeing with UPN poof. It carries unequivocal power from a very consolidated source. Like, just one person can make this decision, theoretically. Like, the king deciding to just call humanity at his whim. Looking at the specifics of the incident, though, Netero carefully chose his location, limited it to what he thought would be one target. If there was some loss or some horribleness to what happened with Netero, it would be the fact that the king wanted to talk, and that Netero sort of broke the terms of their arrangement to ensure the king's death, prioritizing outcome over principles. But it's not like the king deciding to talk makes him 
not a threat or not terrible. The king himself is nuclear bomb-ish, practically speaking. I'm sort of going in circles here. Bottom line, it's upsetting to me and I'm trying to figure out why. Maybe it's just the fact that if we're looking for the answer to the question of where does the light come from, having them get sick, it sort of answers the question with there just won't be. Human darkness already won. There's no chance for Miriam to figure it out. I mean, poof, that ship long sailed. Going went all the way into Devil Beast. Crossing paths with Miriam, who is growing into the light, but we can't because we already got Devil Beasted too much. I need Knuckle to wake up and come back. I need Kalua to come back. I need something beautiful to counteract this pain. What a turn this arc took. This is making me long for the days of dodgeball and <laughs> pawn chopping. God, even the Hunter exam looks, looks light compared to this. Ahsoka looking like a good guy.